Is this your house? look like your house? Hi, my name is Eddie Cat. Get it? Like etiquette. Easy to understand why I love manners. Today, I'm going to help you learn good everyday manners. Knowing the right manners will make you feel good about yourself, help you win new friends, and put you at ease in any situation. And they're fun to learn. Anyone can demonstrate courtesy and kindness for others, and that's the stuff manners are made of. Do you know how to make good introductions? Eat in a fancy restaurant? Well, I'll show you. And here are the people who will be helping me. This is the home of Jenny and Clay Smith. Last time they had friends over, it was a huge mess. A catastrophe, if you know what I mean. Mud was tracked in, the place was destroyed. But Jenny and Clay have been practicing good manners since then, and now you're going to see how much fun good manners can be. They are really catchy. Oh, hi, Reed. Come on in. Hi, Jenny. Hi, Clay. Thanks for having me over. Come here, Mom. She's in the kitchen. This is my friend Reed Thomas. Reed, this is my mom, Mrs. Smith. Hi, Reed. Nice to meet you. And this is our neighbor, Crystal Johnson. Hi, Reed. It's nice to meet you. Remember to always use first and last names when making introductions. And when you introduce two people, it helps to tell them a little bit about each other, like what grade they're in, and where they live, and what their hobbies are. Hey, another visitor. Let's see what happens next. Hey, 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 hey. Mom, this is Kanan Ross. She's in my math class at school. And she lives over at Walker Street. Kanan, this is my mom, Mrs. Smith. Hi, Mrs. Smith. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you, Kanan? Did you notice that Clay didn't introduce his mom by her first and last name? But as Mrs. Smith, you should always use a title such as Mr. or Mrs. when speaking to or about an adult. If Mrs. Smith wants to be called something else, she'll let you know. Also, the rule to follow is to introduce the younger people to the adults. What do you say we catalog what we've just learned? Always use first and last names. Be sure to use appropriate titles such as Mr. or Mrs. when introducing adults and tell the people you're introducing something about each other because it's just good manners. Now, let's talk about something everybody hates. Interruptions. Take a look at the problems that come up next. Well, the PTA meeting is on Tuesday from what I've got down and uh, so that Mom, might be a little bit of a... where's the video that uh, I recorded yesterday? Uh, it's on the bookshelf! I'm sorry. Um, so Tuesday is out. Miss Smith, but would you let me borrow the phone uh, when you're finished? I can't hear you. Just a minute! Mom! Oh, man, can she wail! Most of the time, you don't even realize you're doing it, but interruptions while using the telephone can be very annoying. It's good manners to allow people to finish their conversations in peace. So, always remember... Keep the TV, radio, and your voice down when you're near someone who is on the phone. Make sure you have something really important to say before interrupting, or just wait until your parent has finished the call. Of course, if it's a real emergency, break in at any time. And speaking of the phone, there's another time when good manners are important. Watch what happens when Clay answers the phone. Oh, no, I'm always 
your mother. Oh, uh, hello? Oh, uh, hello? <laughs> now what if that call had been important? It's really rude to treat any caller that way. This time, let's check out Clay doing it the right way. Hello, Smith resident. Is Jenny there? Just a minute, Susie, and I'll get her. Thank you. Jenny, Susie's on the phone. Thanks. Susie? Hey, Jenny, it's Susie. What do you want to do? Good job. Clay catches on quick. He did the right thing by answering the phone as his parents wanted answered. But look out. Jenny is about to get another call. Oh, that would be fun, Susie. Wait, hold on just a second. I'm getting another call. Hello? Hi, Jenny. It's Carol. Hi, Carol. I'm sorry. I'm on the phone with Susie. Can I call you back in a few minutes? Okay. Jenny did the right thing. If you're on a call, don't leave that person waiting while you take another call. Here are some things to remember when using the telephone. Always answer the way your parents ask you to. Never yell. Cover the mouthpiece if you need to call someone to the phone. If call waiting interrupts, don't leave the first caller for long. Take a number and phone them later. After all, it's just good manners. Hey, it's time for Etiquette TV, named after me. Look, here's the furniture channel. Hey, Clay, good manners means not putting your feet on furniture even in your own house. Whoa, feet! Don't even think about going in the house with muddy shoes on. If you need to, take your shoes off before you go inside. Last week, Kanan let Crystal borrow her favorite shirt. And today, Crystal is returning it. And the shirt is a mess! Always return things you borrow. Books, CDs, clothes, anything in the same or better shape as when you received them. Reed Thomas, hungry neighbor in search of a snack. He spots the cookies Mrs. Smith made for the community bake sale tomorrow. He knows they're not for him, but he only wants one or two. Hey, Reed, don't you see that label? Never just help yourself at a friend or neighbor's home. Boy, I've had enough TV for now. Let's review what we just saw. Keep your feet off the sofa, chair, and coffee table. Always check your shoes for mud or dirt before you enter a house. Return borrowed items on time and in the same or better shape as when you borrowed them. If you're hungry or thirsty, ask permission before you help yourself. After all, it's just good manners. When I get an invitation that says RSVP, what does that mean? A. It's a really silly vampire party. B. They're serving Russian sausage that's very plump. C. Respond as si vous plaît. The correct answer is C. Respond as si vous plaît is French and means respond if you please. It's good manners to let the host or hostess know immediately if you can attend. That's the reason many invitations request a reply. Never ignore the RSVP and show up anyway. Try to respond within 48 hours. Wow! Seeing those cookies really made me hungry. I guess it's about time for a bite to eat. Maybe some french fries and ketchup. Remember these guys from earlier? Who would want to eat with them? I gave them a quick lesson in table manners and watch them now. Jenny has learned that sitting up straight and not slouching looks and feels better. Reed is still enjoying the pizza, but now he looks more like a person instead of a vacuum cleaner. And he chews with his mouth closed. Crystal no longer wears a bib. She's learned to put the napkin in her lap. And remember to leave your napkin in your chair if you have to excuse yourself during the meal. Clay has finished eating and has learned to clean up after himself, not relying on his parents to do it for him. Who do you think wrote one of the first books on manners and etiquette? A. Your Aunt Marge, who is always kissing you on the cheek. B. 
your Uncle Ralph who loosens his belt after every Thanksgiving meal. C. Our first president, George Washington. The correct answer is... C. George Washington wrote a book on etiquette and manners in 1747 at the age of 15. It's called Rules of Civility and Decent Behavior in Company and Conversation and includes 110 rules our president-to-be like to live by. Check your library to see if they have a copy of it on hand. Good manners are always in style. They impress your parents and help you build self-confidence, especially good table manners. I don't know about you guys, but I used to be confused by the table settings I'd see in fancy restaurants. Like, why do I need two forks? Well, let's see if Jenny can sort it all out. Thanks, Mr. Cat. If you just remember a few rules, you'll never be confused by an unfamiliar table setting again. It's easy. Informal settings usually include the salad plate, salad fork, the dinner fork, and the dinner knife. The water or drink glass is always to your right, and the bread plate is always on the left, above the forks. A dessert fork and spoon may be above the plate when the meal begins, but usually they are brought to the table with the dessert. When the meal is served, remember to start with the utensils farthest away and move toward the dinner plate with each course. As Mr. Cat would say, it's just good manners. Let's say you're at home watching TV tomorrow and an adult friend comes by to see your parent. How do you greet the visitor? A. Continue watching TV and wave in the general direction of the door. B. Yell, someone's at the door! C. Go to the door, see who it is, and offer a friendly greeting like, Hi, Mr. Hamilton. Be polite until your parent arrives. Then go back to what you were doing. The correct answer is C. When a visitor comes through the door of your home, always deliver a friendly greeting, even if you're busy. Always make the visitor feel welcome. It's just good manners. Speaking of thank yous, I'd promised Kanan I'd go over the rules for writing a great thank you note. You should always write a thank you note as soon as possible after receiving a gift, whether it's for your birthday or another occasion. Also. After you spend the night at a friend's house, you should write a note thanking the hostess, your friend's mom, for having you as her house guest. All right, let's... To write a terrific thank you note, first, be sure to name the gift. Always mention how you'll use and enjoy the gift, and let the person know you appreciate his thinking of you. Hey, Kanan, did those rules help? Yes, Mr. Cat. I just finished a note to my uncle following all your rules. This is what I wrote. Dear Uncle Raymond, thank you so much for the pretty blue sweater. It looks great with my favorite plaid skirt. I can't wait to wear it when we come up to see you later this year. Thank you again for thinking of me on my birthday. Love, Kanan. Boy, Kanan, I think you wrote a great thank you note. Thank you notes are easy. They only take a few minutes and they always make a good impression. And it's just good manners. When your parent asks you to take out the garbage, you should... A. Complain about how hard you work around the house for a meager allowance. B. Mention that you took it out twice last year. C. Take out the garbage. The correct answer is... C. Doing your chores without a fuss is one way to prove how mature you are. Being responsible is more than good manners. It's a quality everyone appreciates and admires. Learning to do your work now will make you a better student, a better employee, and later, a better boss. And who knows? It might get you a raise in your allowance. Why should you care about good manners? It shows respect and consideration for others. And it's an example of your level of maturity. Like when you learn to make introductions the right way, it puts everyone at ease. Remember to use first and last names and introduce the younger person to the adult. Mention something about the people you introduce. And always try not to interrupt anyone during a conversation. Answer the phone courteously and don't keep callers on hold if you have call waiting. Respect other people's property. 
Keep your feet off furniture. Return borrowed items in good shape and obviously keep muddy shoes out of the house and you'll always be a welcome guest. If you visit a friend and get hungry or thirsty, ask permission before you raid the cabinet for a snack. Remember, knowing good table manners builds self-confidence. Follow the rules we discussed and you'll always be comfortable at your house, a friend's home, or the fanciest restaurant. Finally, when writing thank you notes, keep in mind that the people who receive them will think you're the greatest person in the world. I know by now you're catching on, but if you're still asking yourself why these things are so important, here's why. It's just good manners. And now let's answer a few questions from our mailbag. Dear Mr. Eddie Cat, my dad got mad at me yesterday for being late to meet him at the mall. Why should it matter if I'm a little late if I was having a good time? Being on time is very important. When you didn't show up on time, your dad had no idea why. He didn't know if you were just running late or if something serious had happened to you. Always be on time, but if you're going to be more than five or ten minutes late, call ahead or send a message that you're running late. It's just good manners. Dear Mr. Eddie Cat, when I meet a new classmate at school, what am I supposed to say to them? To begin with, ask where your new classmate is from, what their favorite subjects are, and what they like to do after school. You can ask about their family, their pets, where they live, their favorite foods, anything. Just saying something is very important to the new kid on the block. If you've ever been the new person before, you know how nice it is when someone talks with you. Dear Mr. Eddie Cat, I understand that I should use good manners at school and in public, but why do my parents expect me to use good manners at home? It makes just as much sense to use good manners at home. Why not show your family the respect you would show a friend, teacher, or stranger? Dear Mr. Eddie Cat, my mom says I shouldn't wear a hat at the table or in a restaurant. Is she right? Never wear a hat at the table. Hats should be worn outdoors to keep your head warm. Here are some other things to remember while at a restaurant. Don't put your stuff on the table during a meal. If you have packages or books or a jacket, put it on the floor beside you or in an empty seat or coat rack, not on the table. If you have a question about manners, write to Eddie Cat, P.O. Box 422043, Atlanta, Georgia 30342. Send a self-addressed stamped envelope and we'll get you an answer fast.